Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's topic is very important. You can see here welding procedure of SA335 P91 material. This material is very important for the where the pressure piping or temperature piping is used. So this procedure, what are, what is the basic requirement? We have to know before we make the WPS or before we start the welding. So this is very important video. Please see the full video, then you can understand the basic idea of SA335 P91 material. You see here the welding base materials. The P number wise, there is P5, B, P1, P1. You see group number different. P1, group number one, the carbon steel, the TUC is SA192. 5 is SA106 grade B. Why we make this chart? So every people is understand that which P number, which group, group number, which what are the common carbon steel is there, common material is there, and which tube we can use in which P number. What are the what are the pipes grade also? So you can understand P1, all this P1, P1, P2, P3, P1, group number, P3, P1, P4. And you see the AC335 P91 material, it is in P5B. So this P number is P5B, group number is 2. What are the common name? This is 9CR1MOV steels. And the pipe if you see uh, the grade is AC335 P91. So this is very important chart, which material we are using, what are the pipes are using and what are the pipe material so this is the welding base materials this is the welding base materials second is high high temperature steam piping material before p91 so you have to know before p91 there was one material we have used that is called x20 Material used for high temperature piping before the use of P91 was it was X20. So X20 was the previous one. Now it is upgraded. It is P91. Composition of P91 is 9 CR 1 MOB and composition of X20 is 12 CR 1 MO 1 by 4 V. So this is the different only. So we are not using now X20. We are using now P91 material. So you understand now. Brief history of X20. You should know the X20 history. X20 was introduced in the 1950s in Germany and used in streamlines operating temperature of 530 degrees centigrade and higher for power generating sets of 150 MW and more. So this is introduced in German in 1950s and used in where it is used in the steam lines operating at where it is temperature it is 530 degree centigrade and x20 material was first used in india for high temperature steam piping around 1970 by 1970 it was used the first time in x20 and the use of x20 allowed wall thickness reduction of above about 50 percent these reductions resulted in easier handling less energy needed for preheating and post oil heat treatment faster startup and shutdown for the unit so this is the facilities and this is you can say advantage for this X20. However, two factors limited its use. Two factors are there. There is a limitation. What is the limitation? The extreme care needed for its fabrication and welding. Definitely the extreme care should be needed like PWHD, like free heat and the welding amperage, voltage, all these things they have to care very hand. Uh, handling very carefully. Second is its non-inclusion in the American Society of Mechanical Engineers. American Society of Mechanical Engineers asked me there is a non-inclusion. There is non-inclusion. There is not any inclusion in asked me section 9 or any other codes X20. So this is the limitation. Introduction of new materials. So, X20 we are not using now. 
now you are using the p91 us had been trying to develop a new material since the middle of 1970 to bridge the gap between ferrite p22 and austrian steel so there is a gap between the ferrite p22 and austrian steel in 1970s so they changed the upgraded the x20 to p91 with respect to creep rupture strength for high temperature service high 40 to 600 degree so that is 530 degree centigrade so that is service temperature also high now it is 540 to 600 degree centigrade for p91 as a result of these development efforts a new material designated that is p91 was introduced in the us in 1980 so 1970s they ch they just started the investigation for the new material and they designated p91 as 1980s by oak ridge national laboratory so you should know this one 19 p91 from where it is came it has very high strength at elevated temperature and good fabrication properties this future have made p91 the material of choice for high temperature steep piping so this is high temperature steam piping. This is very important material, P91 material for high strength and the good fabrication property. Now P91 material, what is the P number? P number is the P5 way grade 2. Composition, what is this? 9 CR 1 MOB. What filler metal we can use? 90 SB9. So this filler metal we have to use 90 SB9. Electrode, what is the electrode? E901A, 90,000 PSI, the electrode, uh, this is the uh, stencil strength. So E901A, B9, we have to use for the electrode. This is the P91 details. It's very important, we have to know. Now, this is T35 P91 welding step. This is very important. From, from the starting beginning, we have to check the edge preparation and fit up. This is very important for the any welding joint, edge preparation and the fit up. Then we have to do the purging. Then we have to do the preheating. Then we have to do the GTAW, the process of welding the started. After preheating, we have to start the GTAW. Then we have to, in GTAW, we can use the root and then the then the middle and the filler cap we can use the smw then final after welding we have to check the we have to for stress leaving pwht and then soaking then cooling so this is the full process of p91 welding step first is the edge preparation then purging then preheating then gtaw then smw Welding, then PWHT, one of the process of the stress leaving, then soaking, we have to definitely we need soaking, then cooling. Then after that, we can use that material. Means you can use that welding in the final joint, you can say. So first is the edge preparation and fit up. This is very important. Carding of P91 material shall be done by bandsaw, hacksaw, masoning, grinding only. So, P91 material you have to cut by only bandsaw, hacksaw, machining and grinding only. Edge preparation shall be done only by machining. So, edge preparation, there is the edge preparation you cannot do by the grinding and also any of the other machinery. So, you have to do only in the machining edge preparation. That, you, that is only accepted criteria. The weld fit up shall be carried out properly to ensure proper alignment and root gap. So, edge preparation, the fit up. If fit up, we have to check definitely the proper alignment. If there are root gap, also we have to maintain. Neither tack weld nor bridge piece shall be used to secure alignment. You cannot use the tack weld or bridge piece shall be used to secure alignment. Parcel root weld of minimum 20 mm length by GTAW and fit up by clamping arrangement is recommended. So, tack weld definitely we cannot recommend it for P91 material. We have to use there is a root minimum length of root welding 20 mm should be there by GTAW and fit up should be there is a clamping arrangement should be recommended. Clamping should be there. So, this is the requirement for fit up use of site manufacturer clamp for fit up is acceptable so site manufacturer clamp should be 
uh, it should be manufactured by only five that is also acceptable this is the heat up and the hp pressure requirement is very important neither tech wells you cannot accept it so partial root will only minimum 20 mm length by heat aw and heat up by a clamping arrangement now you can see the heat up shall be as per drawing definitely there should be drawing before you holding you make a jolting joint there are the, there is the drawing there are the drawing the drawing should be checked what are the root gap is there definitely root gap shall be 2 to 4 mm root mismatch shall be within 1 mm so there is a root mismatch if it is there then it is allowable if the only 1 mm in the root gap it is shall be 2 to 4 mm this is the, your root gap from here this is the root gap and root mismatch you can see the mismatch if it is there within 1 mm now electrode nomenclature you know very well e9018 you should know what is e9018 prefix e is the prefix means first one the e is the arc welding electrode first two digit or three digits strength in ksi so if it is e90xx if means first two digit is 90 so 90 ksi is the strength of the welding electrode second last digit welding position so second last digit means one this is one e9018 so one is the all position if it is two then it is horizontal and flat position and if it is three then it is flat position so you should know the one two and three what is the meaning of positions what is the last digit last digit is e9018 so if it is uh, so what is the electrode that is one minute the electrode is e9018 so you can see here type of coating and other characteristic is the last one for example e if it is 9013 then rutile coated if it is 9018 the basic coated that is low hydrogen so this you have to know the one means what is the last digit one means what is the three means one what is the eight means three means the rutile coated eight is the basic coated and the suffix you see the suffix there is suffix means the last one a1 b2 or b3 if it is mentioned e1 means 0.5 molybdenum b2 means 1.25 chromium and 0.5 molybdenum and b3 is the 2.25 chromium and 1.0 molybdenum so this is the nomenclature of electrode you should know if you are using this one if you are a welding inspector welding supervisor everything you have to know in the world electrode nomenclature now purging purging why we are using purging reason of purging it is generally carried out on the back side of the oil to eliminate oxygen and other atmospheric gases from mixing with the hot metal so definitely it is avoid to eliminate oxygen if it is oxides in the hot metal then then maybe it is oxidized the oxygen generate oxidized in the old metal then it can uh, it can uh, be uh, cracking in anywhere in the oil. So definitely it eliminates the oxygen and other atmospheric gases from the mixing with hard metal. This is the one is the purging to eliminate the oxygen and other atmospheric gases. Second is the oxygen have a strong tendency to combine with hot metal which will lead to formation of the flames and oxide layers on the oil surface. It prevents the joining of the two pieces by welding so if it is oxygen is there oxygen is, what will happen will lead the formation of the oxide layer and this oxide layer cannot join properly with the two pieces so this is the problem in the oxygen so that's why we eliminate the oxygen by purging argon is commonly used as a purging gas so why argon using the purging gas you see argon is chemically inert heavy non atomic gas available in largely quantity in reasonable cost so reasonable cost also very important so we are using that say argon in chemical it is very inert heavy and non metallic non atomic sorry mono monatomic argon is used for shielding and backing purpose definitely the shielding and backing person we are also using the argon
now you can see the arrangement for purging so this is your joint so we have to close this joint here how it is be closed this is the ai seat aluminium seat 5 mm is there this is 5 mm this is and rubber tube is there here is going to purging the argon gas is going inside there is a cover tube with a 6 mm and this inside they have the pipe so this is the full arrangement to block this uh, air so uh, when the it will be argon is fully here uh, then it will be holding from the above side so this is the arrangement for purging this should be very important this should also know now purging details purging details also you should know the purging should be start from inside of the pipe when root temperature reach to 20 degree centigrade so root temperature when it will be reach to 20 degree centigrade that time purging should be start from inside so this is very important root temperature when it is to 20 degree centigrade definitely it will be purging should be start adequate amount of argon should be purged in the root area so adequate amount of so argon if it is less amount definitely it cannot be maybe maybe cannot purge properly so it can be uh, it can be not cannot be cannot be quality of the oil so definitely adequate amount of argon should be purged in the root area minimum pre flashing time for purging before the start of welding in piece 5 minute irrespective of pipe thickness so minimum pre flashing time is for purging before start of the welding is 5 minute respective of pipe thickness the minimum flow rate to be maintained during purging so purging there is a flow rate you have to check also 10 to 26 liter per minute it should be purging rate for shielding during gtaw welding flow rate is 8 to 14 liters per minute so, so during purging you have to check the flow rate is 10 to 26 liter per minute for shielding for gtaw welding so definitely it should be 8 to 14 liters per minute so this is the purging details you should know now preheating you see the prior to start the preheating you are you are just going to start the preheating you need to check prior to start the preheating the surface should be clean from oil grease and dirt so before start of the preheating definitely the definitely the surface of the materials so it should be clean from oil there should not be anything oil should not be there any grease of the or should not be there and the dirt any dirt particle should not be there preheating temperature should be maintained at 220 degree centigrade so 220 degree centigrade should be preheating temperature it shall be maintained continuously now well preheat and pwht for pipes if it is OD more than 102 mm. So if it is P1 grade 1, SA 106 grade C, so we need to check the P5A. That is P5A, we need to go the preheat is 150 degrees centigrade, PWHT is 682 to 6750. So this is the PWHT temperature for the P5A, that is the SA 335 P91 material, that is 682 750. 682 750. So other also material also there so you can understand in the which signage and what are the requirement now also this is continuous this is the material that is the p1 grade 1 sa 106 p1 grade 2 sa 106 grade 6 p4 grade 1 p5a and it is the p5b grade 2 p5b grade 2 this is also the pwht is the 750 to 770 degree centigrade and P5B grade 2 plus P5A that is 730 to 760 degree centigrade. So this is the PWHT requirement for the, you can see the, for the pipes uh, OD more than 102 mm. Now preheating method, three methods are there in the preheating. One is the electrical resistance heating, two is the induction heating and three is the oxyacetylene heating. So you can see you can you can you can any of the uh, uh, methods you can use generally we are using oxyacetylene in the sites what we are used at site in uh, aramco or anywhere in the project 
definitely all all are um, approximately means uh, most probably it is use the oxy acetone head ttw welding process you should know everybody this is your nozzle this is the gas supply here this is the arc is generated this is the pure filler rod and this is the non tungsten electrode okay non consumable that is your weld metal this is your weld pool here and the bed metal so this is the gtaw welding process what are the use of t welding why we are using the gtaw in the root welding what is the benefits this is superior weld quality pressure is control of welding variable so you can control the welding variable is is uh, very easily like amperage that is voltage free of spatter that is there is not spatter is not too much low distortion distortion it is very chance low chance for distortion weld can be made with or without filler material so weld can be made with or without filler material so this is the t welding benefits that's why we are using the gta SMW welding process, this is very simple. This is, you see, electrode core wire, it is this one. This is your plaques, shielding or heavy coating. This is your heavy coating plaques. Glasses seal, gases seal, the seal, gases sealed is there. Pro projecting sheath, this is your projecting sheath and the slag is generated here. This is your penetration. This is your crater. This is your crater. This is the mold and old metal and the well deposited base metal. So this is the SMW welding process. Now post weld heat treatment. The method shall be by locally heating a circumferential band including the entire oil and adjacent area of base metal by induction or electrical resistance heating. So we can do the post oil heat treatment by induction or electrical resistance oil heating means welding and the adjacent area of the base metal. So those things we have to do the PWHD. It is a PWHD, it is temperature, it is 760 plus minus 10 degrees centigrade. This is PWHD temperature for P91. This is very important. The P91 temperature, PWHD temperature is 760 plus minus 10 degrees centigrade. The soaking time is 2.5 minutes per mm of well thickness, subjected to minimum of two hours. So in the two hours, there is a soaking time is 2.5 minutes per mm. So per mm, 2.5 minutes per mm of world thickness. This is your soaking time. Heating and cooling rates, you should know. So if it is more than 75 mm, that is definitely 55 degrees centigrade per hour. This is your the heating rate. And cooling rate is the 55 degree centigrade per hour also cooling rate. So this is the cooling rate, maximum heating rate above 300 degree centigrade and the maximum cooling rate up to 300 degree centigrade. If it is less than or equal to 25 mm, then it is 220 degree centigrade per hour. This is the heating rate and maximum cooling rate is 220 degree centigrade per hour. AC335 P9A1 welding process. This is the what are the process you see. Sorry, this is P91 welding process. So, serial number you see preheat welding by GTAW SIW, then cooling, then holding at 80 to 100 minute for one hour holding cell content till the start of the PWHT, heating up to PWHT, soaking at PWHT, cooling, cooling. So this is the operation. What are the operation in the welding process? This is the operation we need to check. Temperature, what should be there? 220 degree, welding by GDAW, 220 by 350 degree. Temperature, cooling is 80 to 100 degree centigrade. Temperature, holding. 80 to 100 degree centigrade, it should be minimum one hour holding cell content till start of the PWHD. Rate of cooling is the 100 degree and rate of cooling is also 100 degree here. So this is your operation. You should know the operation. Heating to PWHD, this is 760 plus minus 10 degree and soaking also 760 plus minus 10 degree at 2 minutes per mm. 
which is the soaking rate cooling is the cooling to 350 degree centigrade 350 degree centigrade there should be cooling and cooling to room temperature so this is sa335 p91 material this is your this is the operation what we are used in the welding now prevention measure during power failure if there is a power failure definitely during welding what will happen so no interruption is allowed there not be any interruption allowed during the welding and pwst if there is an interruption definitely it will affect your welding quality following alternative attachment should be made available like diesel generator for power supply gas burner arrangement for maintaining temperature so these two things alternative arrangement should be always available if there is a power interruption one is the diesel gen generator it should be immediately should be applied when the power shut down and the gas burner arrangement for maintaining temperature definitely the gas burner temp arrangement should be maintained the temperature if it is preventive measure for power failure during gt what are the preventive measures should be taken in the power failure if it is during gtaw smnw what preventive measures should be taken one is the gas burner arrangement is used to maintain the temperature 80 to 100 degree centigrade up to length of 50 mm on either side from a weld center along line center line along the complete circumference of the pipe so there should be maintained on temperature 80 to 100 degree centigrade of length of 50 mm and second is root welding shall be continued after pure power is restored and preheating temperature is raised to 120 degree centigrade if it is preheating temperature again raised to 220 degree centigrade definitely root welding, root welding shall be continued preheating measure for power for during pwht heating cycle so it is heating cycle the during the welding process and during the pwht what are the preventive measure of the power failure you have to check during post hole heat treatment the following shall be followed one is the during heating cycle the whole operation to be repeated from the beginning if it is during heating cycle post hole heat treatment the preventive measure what should be taken in the power failure the whole operation to be repeated from the beginning first during soaking heat treat subsequently for the entire duration complete period it's all putting it also complete period during cooling what are the preventive measure power failure reheat the soaking if it is power failure during cooling then what will happen reheat the soaking temperature and cool at the required rate so you have to reheat the soaking temperature again and cool the required rate this is the preventive measure of the power failure of the pwst heating cycle so what are the do's or don't during p91 welding also knows this one is the last one do's and don'ts cutting by bandsaw and hacksaw machining this is you have to do pipe edge preparation and machining machining shall be done without excessive pressure to prevent heating of the pipe so you have to machining shall be done not the excessive pressure then heating can be generated there third is the adequate argon gas shall be ensure for complete purging of air inside the pipe before starting gtaw root welding so before starting of the root welding you have to check that adequate argon gas is ensured for the purging preheating it should be maintained 220 degree centigrade before gtaw welding root welding see this is dues also you have to check argon purging should be continued until the gtaw root welding followed by minimum two filler first so argon purging should be continued gtaw root welding finished then another two passes of the filler metal of smw completed up to that only argon purging shall be continued gtaw wires are kept is absolutely clean condition also gtaw wires it should be clean and it should be free from oil and rust smw electrode are baked to proper temperature it should be baked in proper temperature to prevent any oxidation or any types of cracks interface temperature should be less than 350 degree centigrade it should be maintained 
the interpass temperature 350 degrees centigrade carbon purging arrangements should be removed after welding after welding definitely argon purging arrangement should be removed this is your dose for the pinum right welding is very important and what don't you should not do this one no tack welding or bridge pieces welding is permitted so there should not be any tack welding or bridge piece in the root welding argon purging is continued till the completion of gtw root welding and to lay off the basement up so this is very important you cannot remove any purging uh, record many purging uh, gases argon before the two layers of the smw oxyacetylene flame cutting is avoided so you can avoid the oxyacetylene flame other other two flames is already mentioned in the video so you can use that one do not allow moisture rain water cold wind cold draft etc to come in contact with the oil zone or heating zone during the entire cycle from pwst so you cannot allow anything rain water cold wind or any weather uh, issues so you cannot come into contact with the world zone use on identified tick wires or electrodes is not permitted so there should be identified tick wires should be there what is mentioned in the video and uh, it should be clear in the it should be clearly understandable understand or clearly check by the world inspector so this is your p91 p basic description basic idea you have understand in this video definitely i think you enjoyed this video you can understand the each topic so please like share and subscribe my channel to get the regular video thanks for watching the video if you have anything regarding to know about the p91 material definitely you find me one comment so i will check thanks a lot